Welcome to part one of the Asset Management Seminar brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this seminar, we're going to learn how to build a database to track assets. We'll start off by tracking all the basic stuff that pretty much every asset management database can track. The asset's location, its owner, its condition, its value, the value when you purchased it, the value when you sold it, the date you retired it, all that kind of standard information. What sets this asset database apart is that we're going to be able to group assets together in a parent-child relationship. For example, if you look at a computer store, they may have different assets that are computer components, hard drives, memory, motherboards, and so on. Each one of those individual units is an asset. It has its own unique properties, including a serial number that you might want to track in your database. When you build a full computer, you assemble all those parts together. That new whole unit can now also be tracked as an asset. Let's call it computer A. And it consists of all those child records, the hard drive, the motherboard, the processor, and so on. You may even go one step further and take a bunch of computers and track them as an asset, maybe call it the training room. All right, so there's all kinds of things you can do once you set up this parent-child relationship to group your assets together. And that's going to be the primary focus of this lesson. We're also going to build a transaction history log so you can see what changes were made on what date to which asset. So it'll say hard drive A42 was changed, it's moved from this computer to that computer on this date. So that'll be tracked in the transaction history log and you can track whatever information you want. Prerequisites, the bare minimum you should know before taking this class is the material covered in my Access Beginner classes and my Expert classes up to level three as a minimum because I do a lot of the basic database design, tables, forms, queries, all that stuff in the beginner classes. Expert 1 and 2 focus on relationships, very important relationship concepts covered today. In Access Expert Level 3, I cover forms with subforms, which again, very important for today. Also helpful, my SQL Seminar Part 1, not required, but I will cover a tiny bit of SQL today. I'll show you what you need to know. And of course, I will cover some VBA, so any of my beginner uh, 300 series of VBA lessons for Access will also be helpful. I'll also throw the relationship seminar up on there because, again, today we will talk about one-to-many relationships in detail. I will be using Access 2013 today. Everything I covered today should work just fine with 2010 and 2007. Probably still works with 2003 and earlier, but I can't guarantee it, of course. I don't think I'm using any version-specific topics today. It's pretty generic. My courses are broken up into beginner, expert, advanced, and developer-level classes. Beginner-level classes are for novices. You should understand all the topics covered in them by the time you get to the expert-level classes, which you're in now. When you finish all the expert-level classes, the advanced classes will cover event programming and macros, and the developer classes will cover Visual Basic for applications. Each group of classes is broken down into multiple levels, level 1, 2, 3, and so on. In addition to my normal access classes, I also have seminars designed to teach specific topics. Some of my seminars include building web-based databases, creating forms and reports that look like calendars, securing your database, working with images and attachments, writing work orders and running a service business, tracking accounts payable, learning the SQL programming language, creating loan amortization schedules, and lots more. You can find details on all of these seminars and more on my website at accesslearningzone.com. If you have questions about the topics covered in today's lessons, please feel free to post them in my student forums. If you're watching this course in the online theater on my website, you should see the student form for each lesson appear in a small window next to the class video. Here, you will see all of the questions that other students have asked, as well as my responses to them and comments that other students have made. I encourage you to read through these questions and answers as you start each lesson, and feel free to join in the discussion. 
if you are not watching these lessons on my website, you can still visit the student forums later by visiting accesslearningzone.com slash forums. To get the most out of this course, I recommend you sit back, relax, and watch each lesson completely through once without trying to do anything on your computer. Then, replay the lesson from the beginning and follow along with my examples. Actually create the same database that I make in the video step by step. Don't try to apply what you're learning right now to other projects until you've mastered the sample database from class. If you get stuck or don't understand something, watch the video again from the beginning or tell me what's wrong in the student forum and I'll do my best to help you. Most importantly, keep an open mind. Access may seem intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see that it's real easy to use. Now I strongly encourage you to build the database that I build in today's class by following along with the videos. However, if you would like to download a sample copy of my finished database file, you can find it on my website at accesslearningzone.com slash databases. Sometimes if you get stuck, the easiest way to learn is to tear apart someone else's database. One of the ways that I taught myself access years ago was by tearing apart the Northwind Traders database that comes with Microsoft Access. You'll find there's a sample database for each of my courses on my website. Now let's take a few minutes and go over exactly what we're going to cover in today's class. In lesson one, we'll set up our core tables and a query, a table to track our assets, the condition of each asset, the entity, which will be used to track the owner and the location of each asset, a history table, which will be used for tracking the history of each asset, and a future log for what you have to do for the asset, like a maintenance log. And we'll set up an entity query so we can see either a description, a person's name, or a company name based on what data we have. In lesson two, we'll build our core forms. We'll build our entity form, an entity list form, and we'll build our asset form. In lesson three, we're going to set up our asset list form and the child subform. In lesson four, we'll utilize that history table we created in lesson one, and we'll create a VBA function to run some SQL to track changes to any field in the database that we want to. So if you want to track when the parent was changed, or the condition of the asset was changed, or when the location was changed, you can track all of that in the history log.